This video is going to show you how to weave a DNA double helix with beads by me, Gwen Fisher, from Bead Infinitum. I created this presentation using Doceri software, which is the premier software suite for hand-drawn communication of all forms, designed specifically for teachers. So here on the left, you can see a photograph of a pair of earrings that I made using the technique I'm going to show you in this video. Here's another pair that I made. Um, the DNA sequence I used in this pair comes from the very first patented organism ever, so I think that's kind of interesting. Here's a close-up of the first pair, so you can see how I'm color coding the base pairs in this, um, that the blue is always coated with the green and the red is always coated with the silver. Um, this one was sort of a, a random sequence though. Um, here's another photo of a third pair of earrings, and this photo shows you how flexible the beadwork is. So even though you get a stiff helix, it'll still actually bend. And the last photo I want to show you is the first pair of earrings, again, just from a, a different angle that shows you uh, what the helix looks like if you look at it more on end. Now, while I set up my presentation here, I want to warn you that this is actually a much more challenging weave than it might appear. It, it's, it's it's using only um, a ladder stitch and then a peyote stitch, but you have to get the tension just right, or the beadwork won't make a nice stiff helix. It'll droop and it, it won't spiral nicely. Um, but anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about tension later. Right now I want to show you just the layout of the beads. So we're going to have these little rungs here. These are going to be bugle beads capped with size 11 seed beads in a matching color. And then off of each of these, we're going to have our little base pairs of molecules. So notice I'm always matching the blue with the green and the purple with the orange. And I can um, code it with these um, molecule letters like this. And this particular sequence, um, the enzyme with the genetic code in this particular sequence um, is found in a species of bacterium called Thermus aquaticus, and it's named as such because this species lives in geysers, which are both warm and wet. Anyway, so a little chemistry information. We're going to need a little bit more beads here to hold the beadwork together, so those are going to be size 15 and 11 seed beads, and here's going to be my bead legend here. So the bead sizes we're going to need are size 11 seed beads in five different colors. When I pick them up in the illustration, I'm going to color in darker versions of the same colors. Then we're going to have size 8 seed beads in four of those colors. Those are going to correspond to the molecules in our base pairs. And then the connector beads we're also going to need in size 15 and then three millimeter bugles um, in the gray. So we're going to start this by picking up, let me do that again. We're going to start this by picking up four size 11 seed beads and then a size 8 seed bead, all in the same color, and then pass through the first two beads we just picked up. <coughs> then we're going to pick up an 11, a bugle, and an 11, and then two 11s in green, an 8 in green, and two size 11s. And then we're going to make a picket by passing back through those three beads that are the rungs and then pass through one more blue bead um, to position ourselves to start the next run. So we're going to pick up three size 11s, a bugle, and three size 11s, and then pass through two 11s, a bugle, and uh, enough 11s to get us back up to the next rung, through the rung, and then an 11, and now we're positioned to start our next run. So we're going to pick up four size 11s, a bugle, and four size 11s, and then pass through the three beads in the rung, and then the four beads up the left, through the beads in the rung, and then over to the right. So that sequence that we just did there, that's going to be what we're going to be repeating um, to make this as long as we want. Now when we're doing this, we want our tension to be a little bit on the loose side, and not very loose, just not tight is really what's important here. Um, we need a little bit of leeway, and I should also mention at this point that you're going to be better off doing this weave using um, a nylon thread like Nymo because it has a little bit of flexibility and um, a little bit of stretch, and that's going to help you out in this weave. 
So again, we're going to pick up four beads and a bugle and then four seed beads and pass through the three beads that make the rung and then back up the right and through the beads in the rung. And then we're going to pick up four beads and the bead in the rung and then the four beads on the right and loop all the way around. Then we're going to pick up the corner beads. Now the corners on this are always going to be weird and this was the hardest part about doing this pattern for me and devising it. I ended up having to do a couple of samples just to figure out how to do the corners. So they're going to be odd and it's because they kind of need to be. I couldn't find an easy way to do it that um, I thought looked nice. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to pick up two 11s and eight and an 11 and then we're going to sew around those beads again in a loop so through the five beads and then one more seed bead, that gray one. And then now we're going to peyote stitch. So this part's easy. And this part you're going to ha have to do with a much tighter tension. So we're going to pick up an orange bead and sew through two orange beads. And then we pick up an orange bead and sew through a gray. We pick up an orange and sew through two oranges. Pick up an orange and sew through gray. We pick up one and sew through two. We pick up one and sew through um, all the beads on the edge there around through the bugle bead and all the way around the edge and through a gray bead and now we can peyote stitch our way back up. So we're going to pick up one bead and sew through two, pick up one bead and sew through one, pick up one bead and sew through two, pick up one bead and sew through one, pick up one bead and sew through two, pick up one bead and sew through one, and pick up one bead and sew through one in this case because the corners are always a little bit odd. And then now we're going to pick up those three green beads that aren't th that we have to add to finish that base pair. And then we're going to pass through one more seed bead and now we can peyote stitch our way down. So we're going to pick up two size 15 seed beads and pass through one and then pick up a size 8 seed bead and pass through one. And we're going to repeat that until we get down to the bottom. So we pick up two and pass through one pick up one and pass through one, pick up two and pass through one, pick up one and pass through one, and pick up two and it's going to be a little weird. We're going to sew around in a loop and then we're going to skip an 11 and sew through the eight, skip an 11 and then pass through all the beads in the center there. And the reason that we're skipping those 11 seed beads on that loop is to pull that eight towards the center. It's going to hold it in place so that the corner will be nice and neat. And we're going to need to do the same thing on the right here. So we're going to sew through those blue beads in a loop, but we're skipping the two size 11 seed beads on either side of the 8 bead to pull that bead towards the center. And then we finish by sewing through that size 11 seed bead next to the 8. And now we peyote stitch our way up, picking up two beads and sewing through one, picking up one bead and sewing through one. Pick up two and sew through one, pick up one and sew through one pick up two and sew through one, pick up one and sew through one, pick up two, and we're at a corner again. So it's going to be a little funny. We're going to sew around the loop, skipping the size 11 seed beads on either side of the eight, and then sewing through the center, through that rung bugle bead. And then on the left there, again, we're sewing around that loop, skipping the size 11s on either side of the eight, we pass through a few more beads until we get to the next size 8 seed bead and we tie a knot. And then we pass through that 8 seed bead and sew through a few more beads and we can cut our thread at this point close to the beadwork. Um, but you really only want to cut your thread if at this point your helix is nice and rigid. If it's not stiff, you're going to need to sew through the beads more and more, pulling really tight in order to get that beadwork to be really stiff. Um, and it, it'll take a little bit of practice in order to get your tension right on this. Um, and then to finish the other end, we're going to thread the other end of the thread through a needle, tie a knot right before that eight seed bead, sew through a few more beads, and then cut our beadwork really close to the, or sorry, cut the thread really close to the beadwork. And the beadwork is done, so you can just put on an ear wire and you'll have an earring. And that's it. So I hope you'll show me what you make. Thanks.